वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर नीरू टंडन फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इंग्लिश वी एस एस जी कॉलेज कानपुर इन दिस पेपर ऑफ इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज टीचिंग वी आर डिस्कसिंग द मॉड्यूल ऑन रिफ्लेक्टिव टीचिंग रिटन बाय डॉक्टर नलिना सिंह रिफ्लेक्टिव टीचिंग एज अ डिफरेंट नेम अपीयर्स एंड द बेसिक थिंग रिगार्डिंग रिफ्लेक्टिव टीचिंग इज दैट टीचर इज एट द सेंटर वेन लर्निंग इज एट द सेंटर ऑफ द टीचिंग एंटरप्राइज इट इज ओनली लॉजिकल दैट टीचर्स दम सेल्फ शुड नेवर स्टॉप लर्निंग इफ दे आर टू एड्रेस द डिमांड्स ऑफ द चेंजिंग क्लासरूम teachers whether young or old new or established need to reflect on their teaching from there it comes reflective teaching it is not surprising therefore that it is a well established fact in the field of language teaching that teachers must continually work on their knowledge of teaching and learning this means that they must continually engage in their professional development and work towards improving their own teaching practices one important way by which a teacher can achieve this is by engaging in reflective practice reflection what is reflection then let us understand reflection one and then we'll continue with reflective teaching reflection is an important component of teacher development it lies at the center of quality teaching merely having years of experience as a teacher is not sufficient to ensure the quality teaching according to a critic quality teaching is teaching that addresses students needs in their own context quality teaching should be based on reflection of what happens in the classroom and on how students react to what they are taught quality teaching is not directed by a book but by the goals and objectives that will help students learn unquote thus whether a teacher is highly experienced or not whether he is a trained one or not it is important that every teacher should reflect on his or her teaching to ensure that the teacher is doing the quality teaching it means just teaching is not sufficient teaching should be quality teaching learning is important but here the onus is more on teachers the teachers they should be just prepared for being the good teachers and they should reflect now understanding reflection reflective practice and reflective teaching many teachers already think or reflect about their teaching when they say my students didn't understand this or my students do not take easily to writing task they give up so easily why because most of the teachers however do not move a step further to analyze and to closely evaluate their classroom observations every year every classroom is a different entity every student is different from the rest of the class so how to take him along on this journey of learning that is the job of a good teacher teachers when they do not make deliberate attempts to plan their teaching differently with an aim of improving the teaching learning process then this fails so the demand is that reflective teaching it should carry on with the quality teaching quality work and the teacher who is at the center he should come forward devise something new always so reflection which is an important component of teacher development lies at the center of quality teaching reflective practice helps the teachers to understand their learners needs and abilities while reflection helps teachers to move away from these regular practices the how of teaching to a more critical level of analyzing the what and why of teaching reflection 
helps the teacher to challenge his or her assumptions. It explores different new ideas and approaches towards doing in particularly the classroom scenario. It promotes self-improvement. How? By identifying strengths and weaknesses and taking action to address them. Link practice and theory. Only just explaining that theory is not going to help the learners. When you put that theory as the background and involve learners in the learning process as the practical step, then the quality education can take place. By combining doing or observing with thinking or applying knowledge, this process is done easily. In fact, when we think about what is reflection, then easily we can get the answer in the words of Jenny Moon who said that reflection is a form of mental processing that we use to fulfill a purpose or to achieve some anticipated outcome. It is applied to gain a better understanding of relatively complicated or unstructured ideas and is largely based on the reprocessing of knowledge understanding and possibly emotions that we already possess." Unquote. Now you see in this figure that it justifies, it explains what is reflection. Number one is thoughtful deliberation. From whose point of view? From teacher's point of view. Then learning from experience. This experience comes from where? This experience comes from classroom teaching. So, reflection is systematic, critical and creative thinking about action with the intention of understanding its root and processes according to Fish and Twin. While defining reflective teaching, which is an approach to classroom teaching, where in teachers critically analyze their teaching by collecting data about their teaching. This is the first hand experience. Teachers examine the classroom experience and observations against their attitudes, beliefs and assumptions about their teaching practices. They critically think about it and evaluate it so that they may make changes for improvements in their teaching as well and just raise the standard of learners. Reflective practice is another term being used in this particular kind of language learning. Reflective practice is the close and mindful consideration of one's professional actions, said by Osterman. The term reflective practice was popularized in 1991. Critics were of the view that coaching could help students learn the artistry of practice. But from various others' point of view, the coaching was nothing but a ladder of reflection where the students and the teachers reflect on their actions. It was believed that by developing the habit of critically assessing one's own behavior, one could develop one's own craftsmanship. There are four types of reflective practices. Reflection in action means making decisions about events in the classroom as they happen. To be able to take decisions on the spot in the classroom, the teachers need to employ their tacit knowledge. An oft-repeated example that is given to explain this is that when we recognize a face in the crowd, we cannot really explain how we recognize the face, we just recognize. We cannot pinpoint the separate features, Yet we know that this one is so and so and not that one. This practice requires that the teacher employs knowing in action. The teacher just knows and the teacher takes action in class on the basis of this knowing. Reflection on action means thinking about one's teaching after they have finished the class. It is also about giving reasons for one's actions and behaviors in class. Teachers think back on what 
they did in the classroom. There is an underlying attempt to discover how knowing in action could have contributed to an unexpected action. It was said by Hatton and Smith in 1995. Reflection for action. This theory was propounded by Killon and Todd Dew. This type of thinking or reflection happens even before the action occurs. This is proactive thinking, which is aimed at guiding future action. Killen and Todd New argue that we undertake reflection not so much to revisit the past or to become aware of the metacognitive process one is experiencing, but to guide future action, that is for the more practical purposes. This type of re reflection helps teachers to prepare for the future by utilizing knowledge of their reflection from what happened during class and what they reflected on after class. So both, both these process reflection in action and reflection on action are included. Reflective teaching is thus also useful for identifying the inconsistencies between belief and practice. Now, action research. Action research is to investigate in great detail any one topic related to one's classroom teaching. First, the teacher encounters a problem and recognizes the need to investigate it in order to find out a way of solving it. It's a problem solving technique. The teacher then reads literature related to the problem in order to formulate ideas about the way in which to solve it. This stage also includes the teacher talking to colleagues about the problem as they may have advice to give. The teacher then plans how he or she will collect data. Once the data has been collected, the teacher analyzes and reflects on the data. The teacher then makes data-based decisions. Now, there is models or levels of reflecting thinking. This is called Dewey's model of inquiry. First, according to Dewey, there are six phases. First, there is an experience. Second is a spontaneous interpretation of experience. Third is naming the problem or question arising out of the experience. Next is generating possible explanation for the problem. Fifth is ramifying the explanation into a hypothesis and the final is experimenting or testing the hypothesis. Now Dewey's model of inquiry, there are three attitudes that any teacher who wishes to become a reflective teacher should possess. These are open-mindedness, responsibility and wholeheartedness. There is Van Menon's model as well on reflective thinking. One is technical level reflection. Here the consideration is about the effectiveness and efficiency of achieving predetermined goal. There is no focus on the criticism, modification or change of goals. Then the second is practical level reflection. At this level, the Processes or means by which the goals can be achieved along with the goals themselves are examined and assessed. The third level is the critical level reflection. At this level, not only are processes by which the goals are achieved, not only the goals themselves are examined and assessed, but also the moral and ethical considerations related to the problems are reflected upon so as to support a student, equity, justice, care and compassion. At this level, technical level reflection and reflection in and on action is also there. Technical level reflection much the same as described by Van. Practitioners match their own competencies to the external goals 
and competencies of the required job and work toward improving their performance with respect to these predetermined benchmarks now there are deliberate reflections and after that personalistic reflections as well that is the fourth level of reflection and finally it is critical reflection the final or the fifth level of reflection in it the focus at this level of reflection is on moral political and ethical issues this type of reflection promotes the development of open mindedness again and on creativity these are various levels of reflective teaching the models this one is by driscoll cycle then we have another gibbs reflective model more or this they are just almost same like analysis what do you understand from this like action plan what would you do in a similar event so all these things just reflect so there are many ways in which reflective practices can be promoted amongst teachers teachers can be encouraged to reflect individually or in pairs or in groups just like students were supposed to do in constructivist theory they can reflect by writing or by conversing or by both the means the manner in which a person reflects depends on his or her own learning style their discipline whether written oriented performance oriented or oral what is the significance of reflective teaching reflective practice helps teachers to have a deeper understanding of their own styles their own beliefs assumptions and attitudes teachers are largely guided by intuition impulse or routine reflection helps teachers to move away from these regular practices and the how of teaching to a more critical level of analyzing the what and why of teaching it helps teachers to better understand their roles as teachers reflective teaching enables the teacher to better affect the teaching learning process when a teacher engages in critical reflection a teacher is able to adjust his or her lesson plans vary the methodology accordingly modify activities as per student's abilities modify activities as per the requirement of the equipments and assess if the teacher or teaching objectives are being achieved video recording a video recording of one's teaching is valuable because it provides a real picture unaltered by any bias of how effective the class was the teacher can view the teaching for its effectiveness both from the teacher and student's perspective additionally a video can help the teacher in spotting certain behaviors and signs that he or she would have missed noticing in the class these new observations could prove to be very useful in examining and analyzing the lesson effectiveness besides helping come up with solutions video recording is used by many institutions to help teachers reflect and come up with solutions to make their lessons effective how this video recording is different in reflective teaching that in most of the uh, techniques or uh, procedures we find that students are encouraged to get themselves recorded so that they can just view and analyze their shortcomings teachers can suggest them and they should not feel so shy for public speaking but here in this practice teachers are supposed to re just record their own lectures and add to their present knowledge then comes a student observation a students they notice and observe the teachers just like feedback they are ready to give genuine feedback when asked for it because they have observed their teachers not just as learners but also from a critical point of view from the point of view of a critic teachers can ask questions regarding the lessons effectiveness or whatever else the teacher wishes to get a feedback on by giving the students simple survey or questionnaires 
it is important that the teachers think critically about what questions they would like to ask that would not only give the teachers significant information but also elicit thoughtful answers from their students thus it will not only be a learning experience for teachers but also an indirect exercise in writing for the students now what happened what problems come at this point of getting feedback from the students most of the time students are scared of giving any negative feedback they know that teachers are going to read it so just to avoid it those feedback should be blind feedbacks the names of the student should not be mentioned over there then again when teachers come to know that what students really feel they may or may not like it or encourage students to come forward with honest appreciation or honest criticism the last point may be that students they also may not give honest feedback and unnecessarily criticize the teachers or unnecessarily praise the teacher to come in their good book or just to tease them the next point is peer observation peer observation is a useful way of reflecting as it provides opportunities for teachers to critically view each other's teaching for different teaching styles the kind of materials used the organization of the lesson teachers time management students performance on task time on task teachers question and students responses the typical patterns of interaction and class participation also is included in this method colleagues are invited into the classroom to observe teaching usually the senior colleagues come in the classroom and give their feedback on the teaching of the young teachers prior to the observation the teacher should meet to inform the teacher who is going to observe about the kind of material or lesson being taught the type of students in the class the teacher's approach to teaching the students typical patterns of interaction in the class and other relevant information the teacher being observed would also assign the observer a goal for the observation of the class after the lesson the teacher and the colleague who observed the lesson are there to discuss the observations so peer observation can help teachers gain great insight into their teaching in fact when we talk about peer observation again there are certain problems that teachers are not very comfortable with in the presence of other teachers their original capabilities are being just affected because of the presence of other teacher or their colleague the feedback given by colleague in the class may not be limited just to that particular teacher he or she may go and discuss those negative points if any with the other teachers also that makes the uh, person concerned the lecturer is scared and he may not like to share his knowledge also with other teacher now there are certain questions to ask for reflection whether a teacher uses a self reflective journal or is taking feedback in the form of peer observation or student observation it is very important that the teacher identifies formulates the right type of question to ask given below are a few suggestions for the readers how effective was the overall lesson did i meet all of my objectives what problems arose what materials that were used worked in the lesson which materials did not work in the lesson were my instructions clear was the lesson taught at a reasonable pace how can i do it better next time how did i deal with any problems that come up during instructions was i perceive and sensitive was i perceptive and sensitive to each of my students needs how was my overall attitude and delivery throughout the class so when all these kind of questions are asked 
from teachers as well as from students definitely the person concerned is going to be benefited if the answers are honest and they are taken in the healthy way strategies for promoting reflective practices there are many ways in which reflective practices can be promoted amongst teachers teachers can be encouraged to reflect individually or in pairs or in groups teachers may write journals or self reports just to acknowledge whatever they have learned or whatever they have delivered the ultimate goal of self reflection is to improve the way a teacher teaches through the findings a teacher gathers one may gain the insight that he needs to take the instructions to the proverbial next level or he or she may find that they have already doing the better job in either case self reflection is a technique that can gauge the standing honestly and teacher should strive to implement it throughout the year by the time the next new class rolls around teacher has a better much better wider toolkit to pull from when it's time to teach that lesson once again so reflective practice for teaching is for those teachers who are disposed to think about their teaching practices and are willing to put reflective practice into action Reflective practice challenges teachers who have unquestioned assumptions about good teaching and encourages them to examine themselves and their practices in the interest of continuous improvement. Thus, to conclude, reflective teaching is a new methodology that way, a better met- methodology that way, and more open methodology so that where. not only the learner is under the lens but also the teacher concern and we all know that unless and until all the component of teaching units are there to improve the education levels are not going to improve so keep on learning keep on educating thank you for visiting epg patshala